These high quality custom swabs are completely removable to give access to the facilities that are stored underneath. They're very comfortable and it's a spacious living area for two people, including a TV with satellite and DVD player, overhead storage, speakers, plenty of lighting. This space also doubles up as a dining area with a removable table, which fits in here. There's enough room to feed four. And you might also notice our beautiful hardwood parquet floor, which is made with five different New Zealand hardwoods. Moving on now into our kitchen area. The kitchen has an oven, separate grill, four gas ring hob, overhead extractor, including overhead lighting, plenty of cupboard storage, a sink with hot and cold mixer tap and drinking water with an inline water filter. There's an under counter fridge with a freezer drawer and plenty of space for bowls, glasses, plates, mugs, etc. Additionally, there's a slide out pantry. Now moving on to the bedroom area. So the double bed can be accessed from both sides of the bed and each side has its own bedside table with two drawers, access to two USB outlets for charging your devices. There's a wardrobe with space for coat hangers, overhead cupboards, and additional storage in this box at the back here. I'm going to show you the bathroom. Which has a Thetford cassette toilet which can be emptied from outside the motorhome. A custom fit hardwood sink with hot and cold mixer tap. And this doubles up as a shower head. <coughs> motorhome has a huge storage capacity for water with 200 litres of fresh water and a 120 litre grey water tank as well. This means you can be off grid on the road for easily a week and when you're showering, you don't need to worry too much about how much water you're using. Next, we're going to take a look at the additional facilities that we've got stored around the bus. I've lifted the bed up to show you the amount of storage space you've got underneath the bed. Currently, we have two full suspension mountain bikes under there. Those aren't included with the sale unless you want to negotiate an additional price for them. But it does give you a sense of how much room there is under here. As well as those, we've got a spare toilet cassette, spares for the bus, and this 20 litre 12 volt freezer, which we've been using for food storage. And our outdoor table lives under there too. This can be accessed either by raising the bed as we've got it now, or via the hatch at the back of the bus. Additionally, that can be locked to give you a secure storage area if ever you need to leave the bus somewhere. Moving over to this area, we've lifted out all the cushions and flipped up the bottoms of the seats so you can see the various facilities we've got in the bus. There's our gas powered water heater, a diesel powered space heater, which is wonderful at getting the place toasty in winter temperatures. Our two bottles for LPG, each of which is electronically controlled by its own valve. I'll show you more on that in a moment but you never normally need to lift this seat if you want to change gas bottles when one runs out. We have four batteries, which give you an immense amount of energy storage, various other bits of hardware, which boost DC power, which allow the batteries to charge from the engine when you're running, spares, fuses, and all of your hardware associated with the four solar panels, which are used from the roof to charge the batteries. 
We've also got a 300 watt inverter. So if you have something like say a laptop charger that you need to run from 240 volts, you can do that. There are various switches here which you can use to isolate all of the elements that are labeled. Day to day, you don't generally need to access those. So all of that stays under cover. What you do have access to is your power meter telling you how much charge is in the batteries, controller for the hot water, level monitoring for your fresh water and your holding tank, the gas control here, which lets you turn those gas bottles on and off and lets you switch between the two when one of them needs refilling. Finally, you've got USB outlets and a 12 volt cigarette lighter socket right there. Last thing we'll show you is where the engine lives. This just flips up in between the two seats. And what we have there is a Nissan TD42 diesel V6, 4.2 litres. And that has been fully reconditioned professionally less than 20,000 kilometres ago. So the engine is in phenomenal shape and has been really reliable for us the whole time we've owned it. Welcome to the cab area of the motorhome. I'm going to give you a quick tour of what you find up here. So starting with the dash in front of the driver, most of what you're seeing is as when the bus was new. The additions are air conditioning. There's a small levelling sensor in front of the steering wheel. And there is a rear view reversing camera, which activates as soon as you put the vehicle into reverse. The real big difference that you get at the front of this bus, which you won't find in many others or perhaps, perhaps any others, is with the drivers and passenger seats. And rather than being the original Nissan civilians, these have come from a luxury passenger car. And in the passenger's case, rather than being tight up against this wall in this window, which is what you normally find, it's positioned much further over, giving your passenger a lot more shoulder and elbow room. And you've got a custom seat belt arrangement, which has been built for this bus, registered with the Department of Transport, and will give you all of the paperwork that supports that installation and it makes for a much more comfortable experience as a passenger in the motorhome. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video tour of our motorhome. Please check out the rest of the pictures and the full text description on the ad and get in touch with us if you've got any questions or if you want to arrange a viewing. Thanks.